Thank you. We can now move on to the next talk by James Bryant. Uh, hi, thanks, Anna. Um, so my talk Please. was with Dr. Rowan Seymour, and the title of the project was Comparative Judgment Methods for Poverty Estimation in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. So Dar es Salaam is a huge city on the eastern coast of Africa. Um, but despite being such a huge city, so many people living there and rapidly expanding, not much is known about the city in terms of its distribution of people and um, how they live in their certain different areas. Uh, this is mostly due to um, the government doesn't provide statistics on these. Um, to an extent, it is slightly illegal to publish some statistics in this sense. However, I'm not entirely sure of all the details. Um, so research of this kind is really important to help with humanitarian aid, should there be some sort of disaster in the future or um, anything of that kind of book. Uh, so next slide, please. So Dar es Salaam has been split up into 452 different regions. Uh, these are just little areas that we use to compare against each other. Each one of these regions is given some sort of parameter value, which I denoted uh, lambda i. Um, these values are, you can think of them as like a niceness value or how nice is that area. Um, so a larger value would say that that area is nicer than a different area, which has a um, smaller lambda value. Uh, we can use these uh, lambda values to build models. Um, so, for example, in the non-ties model, uh, which I'll explain in a second, we can build up a binomial distribution. So let's say you want to compare two areas. You have area I and area J, and you want to know which one is better. So you will go out, you ask a lot of people, and they'll bring back a load of responses. So some people say that area I is better. Some will say that area J is a nicer area. Um, uh, and in that case, you can generate such a binomial model using this method. So in that one comparison, there are only two options, hence the binomial name. Uh, and you can generate uh, a probability of saying that um, area I is better than area J, or is more likely to be chosen as being better um, by exponentiating the uh, lambda value and then just taking a fraction, as you can see here. Uh, this can be seen as like a probability of picking area I over area J. Uh, if you want to allow for ties, so you can say that the area I is roughly the same as area J, um, so that there is a similar level of niceness, if you will, um, then we add on this geometric mean term, uh, this weighted geometric mean, uh, nu times the square root function here. Um, and this just allows us to extract the extra or in theory extract extra information from the data um, and obviously in this sense because we now have three options it becomes a multinomial model so you've got uh, area i wins area j wins all that they're both the same uh, next slide please so from those functions uh, or from those models you can generate uh, likelihoods and with those likelihoods uh, and you can apply in a Bayesian framework, you can apply some prior distributions to some of these um, lambda values and see how you think that they might be distributed when you consider all 452 regions. Uh, but to estimate these lambda values, it can be quite difficult. And in the Bayesian framework, the um, equations can become quite messy. Uh, one of the best ways or the method that we used um, to estimate these lambda values is using a Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm. In our case, we used a Metropolis Hastings uh, MCMC. Um, so we, so just to run through this quickly, we initialize uh, our estimates for all of the lambdas. So for example, you can just assume at first that all of them are the same. You just say that they all have a lambda value of zero. And for the, if you are to include ties in the model, then you would need to include a new variable as well. Um, so you then run through many iterations of this MCMC algorithm. For example, I used uh, up to 5,000, which was probably far too many, um, but it meant could get very, uh, 
very reliable results from following the so many iterations. So on each step of this iteration, you then need to loop through every single Lambda J. And on each one of these Lambda Js, you can add on a small bit of noise and create a new proposed Lambda J value. So you then want to compo uh, compare this Lambda J and a new proposed Lambda J. And you compare them by looking at the difference between the likelihood functions between the two different Lambda J values. So if the Lambda J proposed is higher than the other likelihood function is higher than the likelihood function using the Lambda J, then you would accept this new proposed version and just get rid of the old one. Um, you store all of these Lambda J values. And then once you've done all of your, let's say 5,000 iterations of the algorithm, uh, then you calculate the mean, and that would be your estimate for your lambda i's, and also at the bottom here for your news. Uh, next slide, please. And this is the kind of thing that you can generate. Um, so this graph on the left shows, or is a visual representation of all of these lambda values. So the greener areas are seen as nicer, uh, if you will, and the redder areas are seen as being more deprived. So the people who would answer these kind of uh, questions or provide this data would be locals as or local residents, um, as they know the different areas best. Um, and it can actually be shown from, or my internship was to compare the two different models. So you can actually see that the uh, ties model doesn't actually extract any extra information um, over the non-ties model. Um, you can extract that information using some other clever methods, such as if you were to allow for ties when you're collecting the data, let's say you were to um, randomly select a winner from those ties, you can extract that information as well from a non-ties model as you can from the ties. And as such, both models produce similar graphs to this uh, in that they look very similar. Um, and you can, just for reference as well, you can see the little area roughly in the middle uh, that sticks out into what would be the sea uh, that is really dark green. That is one of the most touristy areas of Dar es Salaam, and you can see that it's been highlighted as one of the nicest areas. So that would have a particularly uh, large lambda value. Uh, I think that's all I've got to say. Are there any questions? Are there any questions for James? Yeah, David? Uh, yeah, oh, thanks for that, James. Could you say maybe a little bit, or be a little bit more explicit? I didn't quite follow the kind of data that you had that you used to generate these results. OK, so the data was collected by the business school and they went out to Dar es Salaam and they asked a load of residents um, or local residents from Dar es Salaam who knew the area as well um, to compare different areas. So let's say on a screen they would flash up uh, two different areas. You'd have a um, um, any two. They were usually selected randomly. They say, which one do you think is the nicest area to live in? And then they would select whichever one they thought was best. In some cases, that was allowing for ties as well. So if they thought the areas were the same, they could say, OK, they're both the same, move on. However, they would usually select a winner. So let's say area I won over area J, then that would um, area I would be selected as the winner. And then that would then be used to feed into the models. Um, so it's also very similar to for those who have done um, PMM, um, I don't know if they're still running those class tests uh, in the same way, but when you have to mark um, the class tests that were submitted, um, you write your example down to a preset question. Um, and then we, for example, it was a few years ago now, but when we had to compare all of the different answers, we'd say which one was mathematically better. It's the similar, same idea. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. There's just loads of loads of paired comparisons. That, yeah. That's the the input data. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Any other questions? Oh. 
OK, I think we have no more questions, James. So thank you very much again. Thank, thank you.